sis. Thank you. Um, the councillors present are here unofficially and agree to come and try to answer any questions and concerns as best they can. However, this is not a council meeting and therefore any questions about the operation, organisation or personalities of the council will not be allowed. There are far too many tangible issues that need addressing, such as bins, rewilding, dog mess. So I would appreciate it if everyone could keep to the script. And anyone dis disrupting the meeting um, with any animosity or any personal attacks will be asked to leave. Um, I want this meeting to be informative, constructive, and above all, to remain civilised. Anyway, that's the serious stuff over for the minute. On a lighter note, um, excuse the pun, Craig from Portishead Lights is going to do a, a, a demonstration or a presentation about how the, the lights are, how it's progressing, really, the funding and, uh, and everything that goes with it. Do you want to use this one? Yeah. There we go. There we go. That's better. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, like I was saying, as you can see, the Portishead Christmas Lights Committee turns 50 this year. So, uh, it's a big celebration for us, obviously. As it says in the title, we've been doing it for 50, well, I haven't been doing it for 50 years. Um, the committee has been doing it for 50 years. And this is how it all started. So in 1974, um, there was no more funding for the Port said Christmas lights. And a group of volunteers turned around and said, we want our Christmas. They stood forward, and here we are today. Ever since then, the Port said Christmas lights have grown and grown and grown. And the best thing about it is it's not just Christmas lights. Over the years that we've been doing this, we've had loads of feedback saying it's great for our family. It's a family tradition. And what they mean by that is a, we've got families who come out and put the lights up for us. We've got families who walk the lights, which is a new thing that we've only uh, known in the last couple of years. So people actually would start from the top of the high street, they walk all the way through, and then back again. It's a two and a half kilometer walk, which is great for families, your mental health, and all sorts. And of course, it just puts a smile on everyone's face when you see the lights going up. So, we need your help. Porto Christmas Lights is totally funded by donations, sponsorships, and grants. We get an absolute vital grant from the Porto Town Council, which we can't thank them enough. But over half of our fundings come from our donations from the general public. That's through PayPal, through our websites. That's through uh, the little cash tins that you see dotted around the town. And uh, bank transfers as well. People are so, so generous to us. Also, the uh, businesses with Importer said. Now, we know times are hard for all the businesses, and there's lots of things people want to sponsor. But we are, again, so grateful to our sponsors. The money that's raised is so important to us, because not only do we have to pay for our electricity, the big myth that the shops pay for it, they don't. We do. We've got metered boxes throughout the whole of the high street, Importer said. And every year, we have to pay for electricity. Health and safety, road signs and crowd barriers. We have to pay for it all. We have to pay for these road closures. We have to send people away on training for the road closures so they know exactly what they're doing and they're qualified to do what they do. The scaffolding, there's 230 scaffold poles that go throughout the high street holding this display up. 
event applications, road closures for the switch on and for the uh, for, say, uh, sorry, a posset Christmas market. These things cost an astronomical amount of money for the licensing, the planning that goes into it. It's just to name a, uh, a few things that uh, happens in these events. The Christmas trees, there's over 100 Christmas trees that get put up. Now the Christmas trees, we have our uh, sponsor a Christmas tree event. So it's an opportunity for people to come along and sponsor a Christmas tree. They actually go on sale this Saturday. So Saturday the 2nd of November at 9 a.m. Over the last two years that we've run this program, within 24 hours, the trees have been sold out completely. So we can't thank you enough for everyone who sponsored those trees. Equipment upgrades. Now, funny enough, a couple of years ago, we had to upgrade a lot of cable because we have to stay in within regulations. And if it wasn't for a national grant, uh, sorry, a national grid grant, never have been able to update all that we did in one go. And that's an ongoing thing. Of course, we've got bulbs. There's over 12,000 light bulbs that get hand-fitted and taken out every year. Equipment testing. Big, big part of what we do. We've got to make sure everything's safe. And then team training, like I said earlier. We put people through our own training to try and reduce costs as much as we can. Big, big thing of ours, we need volunteers. Without volunteers, we really can't do what we do. We have loads of people come out for the lights up day, which is fantastic. Over 100 volunteers come out, pop these lights up, put over 12,000 bulbs in by hand, and then take them all back out at the end of the season. But the big one that we need is people for road closures, um, VIP hosting, marshals, stewards, Santa's helpers. And you get, if you are a Santa's helper, you're guaranteed to be on the good list. Uh, and electricians. We've got people from all over. We've got qualifications from people who we didn't even know we need uh, these people for. But these things here really, really matter to us, and we really need the help and support of the locals in Port Said to make sure that these events can run. Without these volunteers, it just isn't going to happen. Other ways that you can support. The big one is like and follow us and share on Facebook and now Instagram as well. The reason this is so big is because it shows not just uh, potential sponsors, but now we're a registered CIC, it will help us get grants and funding in the future. By having these likes and follows and shares on Facebook, it just shows other people how big we are, how great our Portisade Christmas lights are. Again, exactly the same with leaving us uh, TripAdvisor and Google reviews. They all help massively. Come along to our events and other community events that raise funds for the Port Said Christmas lights. We run, it's not just from now up until December that we're raising funds. We're constantly going for it. We're always looking at ways to raise funds for the lights. Tell the world how great the Port Said Christmas lights really are. How we want to do world domination on Port Said Chris, eh, on Christmas lights, sorry. Sorry, Clevedon, Western Supermare. We are so much better than all of you guys out there. We're always open. To suggestions. If you no suggestions, silly. We always want to hear your feedback, your recommendations, and what we can do after. We're always trying to make the the display bigger and better. We've had new uplighters put in. We've done loads of cable upgrades. A lot, lot of people know this, but the spacing of the actual uh, light bulbs has reduced, so the display looks a lot, lot better. Any minute, there we go. And just to remind you of what we actually do from the Port Said Christmas lights. There's a little uh, show here from the Port Said drone that I'd like to show you. He says, any second. Here we go. Here we are. Lovely. Um. As you can see, there's all these new tree uplighters in Windaway Island. And as we're miranding through the high street, you can see our Santa sleigh that we won an award for back in 2018 for being sick best Christmas lights in the, in the UK. The biggest thing about this display 
is when people see this video on YouTube and on our internet pages, they are blown away by how many lights are in it and how long it goes on for. And also, it's not just the high street. It's the Waitrose Piazza. It's also up on West Hill. And it just keeps on going. There we go. <laughs> so you're going to see in a second, there's two big trees coming up. They're not currently lit on this video, I don't think. Or well, they might be. Yes, they are. So just in the background here, we can see there's some trees uplit. Now, we used to light these up with little fairy lights. Now, we've got these big tree up lighters, which we think give off a, a great effect. There's actually 40 of those dotted around the whole of Porter's Head. So in order for us to get this display up, on the last Sunday of November every year, Starting from about six o'clock in the morning, there's a band of about 10 volunteers who go out, dropping all of uh, the cable reels off, getting all the equipment out. And then about eight o'clock, we see the big, massive volunteers come down onto the high street with the high visits in all sorts of weather, whether it be rain, snow, sun, whatever it is, to get these lights up. And then, as you can see, coming up, there's another big tree up light project. So in this tree alone, there's five tree up lighters, just to try and get the best effect we can. Then, of course, getting to Mr. When you pray, by yourself, pray to your father who is there. So the biggest... This is how you should pray. Our is the tree of, thy name be hallowed. tree of light Christmas tree is on average 15 foot on earth as it is in heaven. Takes about six months to get up on the Somerset Hall roof. It's really, really hard. Okay. And that is, it will go to the high street and stuff again. So, thank you ever so much for having us this evening. On, uh, in November, 5th of November, starting at 5.30, and the lights get five. Then up, switch on, it's an after party, something that we've never done before. The after party starts at eight o'clock, and that's at the BS20 bar. So you're all more than welcome to come. It's a total free event. We just want to turn around to you guys and say thank you. Thank you for having us for 50 years, and hopefully, we can go on for another 50 years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Am I? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you ever so much. Um, from now on, the floor is going to be open. There's a microphone there for people who want to come and ask a question. If you're too shy to come up, it's a roving one if you want one. Um, I have asked Ben Aldridge to chair this meeting because he's far more experienced at this than I am. And I'm um, hopefully going to take minutes if I can keep up. Uh, so, Ben, would you like to um, come and take over? Do you want to sit here or do you want right there? Evening, everyone. Evening, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, just kind of re-emphasise kind of what Heather said. Kind of let's keep it polite. Let's keep it cordial. This is a meeting for kind of you guys to ask the councillors any questions you've got or something you've got answers to, etc. Uh, but no name calling, no blaming. If you want to pick something out, blame the council as a body, not as individuals. Uh, and just kind of something very personal from Paul Churchill and I. There'll be absolutely no questions being asked on why we left the council. It's a no-go area for us. Uh, this is your meeting to ask the questions about what this council can do for you and your town. Uh, so we'll kind of, if Mike could let me know when someone's online with a hand up, or they're going to get a cricked neck. Uh, I just have that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll start with the floor here. Anybody got any questions? Anyone to start? 
put your hands up and we can kind of we'll go from there with it. Lady. Yeah, Paul. Uh, hi, is that is that working? Yeah, hi, I'm Paul Gardner, I'm a councillor for the East Ward, which is obviously the east side of the marina. Um, it's always been quite complicated. The uh, the north side of the marina is, is adopted by North Somerset Council. Yeah, yeah, where the where the school is, yeah. Yeah, so on that side, that's been adopted by North Somerset Council, but on the east side, um, uh, the H&W, it's not, basically. So that's still owned by the developers who developed originally. Um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so that's... So, yeah, it's always been troublesome. At some point, it will be adopted, but um, I was told that five years ago. There are still various... Uh, <laughs> yeah so basically uh yeah it, it's a long process but as far as I, the latest news i have is that the you know the, the developers have still not done some basic works like sort out the drainage and stuff like that so obviously at north somerset and i'm going to take it over until all of the work has been done otherwise they just end up yeah on the east side it's the developers obviously the rest of the town it's it's yeah generally it's north somerset i mean uh some of the information in the leaflet if you've got anyone's got a general so we them around the town uh you can there we go yeah yeah so so some people do their own bit which is great there are some footpaths yeah yeah exactly so thank you yeah. um yes basically you some people do their own uh you can contact the town council um we have a town orderly for a day a week who does that kind of thing in the office there's a big list of uh, like bits of grass cutting or tidying up that, that can be done or or you can contact North Somerset as well if it's a bigger job and it's most of the land in Portishead is theirs but not all of it so it can be a little complicated uh, that, yeah, that's a good question because that's sort of uh, that's yeah that's that's so that's a North yeah 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 so the question is about the boardwalk on the marina so that is uh, a north somerset responsibility that one so yeah yeah okay all right all right sorry yeah i'll give it i'll, I'll put the mic back thank you uh next up anyone else in the one second one second unless i've got a willing volunteer for the mic maybe i can hear you Okay. Um, I just wanted to comment on the weeding. Um, I live in St Peter's Road, and our road was selected apparently two years ago, totally unbeknown to any of the residents, as a non-weeding area. And it has been absolutely horrendous, and it's getting worse. Um, apparently, vo the locals were supposed to volunteer, and they had 20 volunteers however only two of us actually turned up on the days that they were going to do the weeding i understand that the council are going to take it back over um, but in the meantime I, I wanted to comment on the pavements because church road south and the high street there's a particular area there where there's lots and lots of leaves and last winter, people were going flying because they hadn't been cleared. It's still not been cleared. You can't even see the drain. And I'm just wondering whether the council actually do anything about the pavements as opposed to, you know, the main pavement. I know there aren't any pavement cleaners now, but surely somebody has to take responsibility. I assume that's NSC. Is that right? Okay, right. Thank. Can you hear me? Uh, David Gunnell, I'm a councillor for North Ward um, and was involved with the, the weeding uh, experiment, if you like, or weeding trial. Um, 
I, I can't tell you how your road, how St Peter's Road was chosen, because that happened before I joined this council. Um, I, uh, but you've summarised nicely the difficulties that we experienced hand weeding the camp, um, that stretch of road. I think for a number of reasons, it's a long stretch of road. There are lots of cul-de-sacs that go off it, and a quite a large patch that um, is by folk and, and, and sort of parkland, if you like. Um, so we've asked um, North Somerset to, to take on spraying the area game because we simply, the experiment didn't work. We didn't get enough enough buy-in. Um, as far as the pavements go, I, I think that's an issue that you need to report to North Somerset Council because they're, they're basically responsible for the pavements. Um, so we gave it a good shot because a number of folk around Portishead were really keen to see the end of glyphosate. And I must say, I, I was one of those people. So we tried... You know, we, we gave it a good try. I think what we've decided as a council going forwards is if a group of residents from a particular road come to us wanting help coordinating um, community weeding, we'd be happy to support that. But it really does need, I mean, you, you've highlighted the issue. I, I, I don't think it was um, St Peter's Road was chosen in consultation with uh, the residents. So I think if residents come to us and say, we'd really like to you know, give this a go, we'll do it. Is that, is that okay? Thank you, David. Thank you, Linda. Uh, who's next up? Anybody in here? Yeah. Um, I'm that's um. Ed. Senior. <laughs> um, for the last couple of years, we've been trying to talk to the Portishead councillors. Um, I've been along to several of their meetings. Um, we've got two issues with them. Um, one is the shiny maps on the wall here, because we have our members sitting that way uh, with a screen here um, and they're very shiny <laughs> um, and the the obstacles as you come in the door because we've got elderly people and we have inside the door there I haven't looked but there usually is a fire extinguisher stood uh, freestanding followed by a piano with a stool sticking out from it followed by a large box that's got no reason to be in here. Um, they're dangerous obstacles. They're trip hazards for elderly people, for anybody really. But coming in from a main door, they're not right for, for seniors. Going on from that, Roger Whitfield, I don't know if he's here somewhere, is, is, is looking in. We have a, a, oh my God, <laughs> you can hear me, I can tell. Um, we have a major problem in that they uh, don't set up the halls anymore. Um, I was told originally they'd advertise and couldn't get a, um, a new caretaker to do it. Um, I went home and rang two agencies that I'd used in a previous job I did, um, and both of them could supply. When I told Mike when I came here, um, you didn't follow that up or want to. So I can only assume that was a done deal on the way these were going to be run. By doing it, they're excluding or trying to exclude senior people from hiring the horse because there's no way we could ask our age group or people with infirmities to move tables and chairs around. 
We've hired this hall on a monthly basis for the last 18 years. The, it has always been set up for us um, with no problem. Suddenly, there's a massive problem um, which sort of coincides with us uh, being sort of complaining about the, the maps and the obstacles in the hall. Um, I know two people originally left here and went elsewhere. That's what they're suggesting to us now. Mike will tell you he's written the email to me that Can we... we... Just one second, just names. We're not calling Mike's an employee of the council. Okay. So just please, again, the respect, just leave the names out of it if we can, please. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, the, the, the um, halls manager here has said that um, he... Uh, like they can't guarantee they can do that. Perhaps we'd be better off going somewhere else. It's no way to be running a business or a hall or anything else, isn't it? Is it? If there's a problem, you need to sort it out in the council, not bring it to the customer each time. Um, we're really unhappy about it all, and we're asking really if you will support us in you know going forward with this in some way. Thank you. I think. Was it, you mention Roger was involved in this one, did you say? Was, was, Roger, have you got any, are there any, any answers on this one you can give or? Hi, thank you very much. Um, yeah, just to say that, that yes, Jan has been coming to meetings for quite some time, raising a number of issues. And um, as, a, as a result of it, the last time she came to a meeting, I arranged a meeting with her and the deputy clerk where we went through all of the questions that she had raised, made sure they were all still valid and, um, and that she's, she still wanted answers to them all. And um, we're in the process of collating the answers to get back to us. So this is a, it's an ongoing process. So sorry it's not been as quick as you might have wanted, Jan, but um, I, I am nearly there now and I'll be back to you soon with a, a date for another meeting. Thank you both. Laura? Thank you. Is it still on here? Hi, my name's Laura Porter. I don't know if I'm supposed to say in this forum that I'm happy for my name to be recorded in any minutes. Um, I have a physical disability and I run activities for people with all different types of disabilities. I have also found that in hiring spaces, what I had assumed would be assistance with setting out the furniture just isn't happening. Um, because I've only recently started hiring venues, I've assumed that that has always been the case and that if you hire a space, you're responsible for shifting all the furniture. Then I started writing all the policies for my business and looking into insurances if I were to ask for volunteers. And I think it would be a good idea to just look into the insurance implications for when visitors to your premises are, high, are, are moving your kit. Um, because I think there will be some circumstances where you're not insured for visitors to move the kit. Um, and then just an idea for the glare. I really hate the glare as well. I think with the glare, you can't actually see the map. Um, but that could be so easily fixed with just a light curtain or something to pull across, just a really lightweight screen to pull across so that if people were hiring it and wanted to get rid of that shine really quickly without interfering with any of the existing fixtures, just pull a light screen across. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, and that's got it, yeah. Mike, uh, Roger, are we going to leave you to take that one away with what Laura said as well, as part of the whole questions? Yeah, it, it's, it's part of the whole thing, so yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, one, it's one of the things on the list, so thank you. Um, yes, um, Chairman, I just wanted to say that um, a few years back now, there was a risk assessment in this hall, and in fact, the clerk at the time, it's not the clerk that is here now, um, said that there, it was not possible for anything to be at the end of the hall, because if there was a fire alarm, 
that is the exit of the hall for people to leave the building and get to the car park on the other side. And there should be no obstacles there at all. And there shouldn't actually be a standing fire extinguisher either. And we only know that because some of us have brought things into the hall before now, whether that's campaign boards or bicycles, and they've been told not to put them um, in that section of the hall. So there will be things in the archive um, that's easily obtainable that should actually explain that obstacles like that is not um, a health and safety um, require, you know, it's not, um, it doesn't satisfy the health and safety and, and risk assessments of this hall. Um, if that has changed, I'd be very surprised because it was actually, um, you know, we, it was drummed into us a few years back. Thank you. Thank you. I do. I am obviously aware the assessments have been done. Uh, I mean, the extinguisher is the one that makes me chuckle. It's, it's my job, day job, is a fire consultant. This should be on a stand or something, but yeah, that's another point. We'll come back to that one later. Uh, we'll we'll wrap it all up into one question mark for Roger to kind of come back with one clear answer. I suppose is probably the easiest way. Roger, is that agreeable? Yeah. Thank you. How long do you think? Realistically, Roger, to kind of get all the answers wrapped up into one, to kind of get back to the relevant people. So, Jan, really start time, realistic time frame should be. Yeah, Jan, Jan's answer is probably around about a week now, I think, and we should be there with that. I need to check with the um, with the clerk and and deputy clerk because some of the issues were raised were health and safety. So we've asked for to go back to the health and safety consultants whoever did that to double check to make sure that there's no issues with that um i've i've been a little busy these last this last week or so so i've no chance to catch back up with them but i will and will try and encompass all the answers into one in around about a week or so i think so if we say then sorry it agreeable to kind of mid-november as a realistic time frame two yeah. and a half weeks yeah no reason why not is that okay with everyone else that's asked the questions around that can I just ask, Roger, how do you intend to let people know uh, the answers to this? How are you going to uh, advertise, you know, the answers? Well, initially this was raised by, by Jan, so we'll hopefully be having a meeting, if she's agreeable to that, to run through the, the answers to that. And um, any health and safety issues, I think we'll probably cover off at the next council meeting just, um, just by running through what um what's come back from the advice on that and, right. and where it's so will everybody um i mean i know the question was asked by one lady but obviously it concerns everybody um how do you intend to let everybody know the situation will you be putting it out on social media or will you be... uh, yep no i can do that if 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 everyone's interested I... in the answer answer to the to all those questions then i can put all the answers out on social media Fine. it i mean obviously social media is only going to get a certain percentage of people um and there's only so much resource we can put into to disseminating this information but we'll do it at council meeting we'll do it on social media no that's fine okay, okay. Do you want one second, Annette? Just Sorry. can we just make sure that social media means the town council website, not any ad hoc social media um, that might be around the town, so that everybody who is on uh, the internet can access it? And I think that's that's only fair to the the whole of the town because I think safety is is important, isn't it, um, for everybody? And just finally. Does that piano even get used ever at all? Asked by a, a, a community musician who heavily promotes pianos in spaces. Does it need to be there? <laughs> Do, uh, I mean, it, ha having it removed would probably cost you money. You won't be able to sell it. I know it, is, re it plays reasonably well, but if it's not being used by anyone, including this community musician who likes to use lots of pianos wherever they are, maybe that could free up some space. <laughs> I can tell you something about the piano. We had, um, because of the mess up with the hall uh, book in here, um, we had somebody stood in and tried to play the piano. Um, so it's got a, a really large intake of air every time you put your foot on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it was time for it definitely to leave here. Yeah. Very gentle.
Cool. Well, uh, so Roger will get back by the mid no Emma? No, I was just saying, I, I saw a chat come up, um, a message on the chat. Okay. Someone on the, on the behind me? It's just recapping on that one, then obviously Roger's looking into it. He will arrange the meeting uh, by mid November. The answers will be out there uh, with the meeting arranged with Jan, and also they'll go on to the town council social media site. Uh, and if anyone's got any questions, and obviously at the town council meeting. Uh, Whenever that is, I actually know when that is, if I'm honest. Uh, but yeah, when? 13th. The 13th of November. Uh, so, yeah, but they might not might not be at the council meeting by that point, obviously, by the fact that it won't be far away, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, next questions in the room? Anybody? Wall of silence. Can't, everyone, someone's got a question, surely. Gentlemen here. One second, one second. I guess it's probably a subset council's responsibility, but can anybody explain what happens every time it rains hard, rains heavily, and we get so much flooding around, what is said, especially on along by Lipfield Place outside Gordano School, and also up at the top of the high street, and now around towards Waitrose. Okay, for that. Um, yeah, so yeah, flooding, obviously, we're on a floodplain. It's a serious issue um, in many, many parts of town, obviously, particularly around Gordano School and Lipgate Terrace. Um, Bob Carter is not here today, but he's the expert on it. But he, I'll, I can give you, i tell you what I know. There's, there's basically a host of different problems. So, yeah. Uh, well, it was resurfaced, but they didn't uh, do anything to the uh, underlying drainage, which is from the 1930s. So, so what happens is the rain comes down the hill, um, you know, obviously down into the valley. Um, it can't go anywhere. If if it's a high tide, the, the water's coming up from the, the, the sea, um, and it basically all backs up. So you've got uh, one problem is the uh, the, the old drainage. Uh, there are, there have been a number of blockages along the Bristol Road. Some of them are under people's houses and gardens, so it's very difficult to get to get at them. So you, you you have to you know so the council has to get permission from the landowner and so forth. Uh, the ring by the football club often gets blocked, so the town council owns the football club land, so we regularly clear that out. Um, so there's and and basically the uh, and the, with the sluice gates at the end by the industrial estate and that that is just not big enough to cope with the amount of water. So there's a whole host of different issues. Uh, so the problem is it's just very expensive to, um, to 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 get it fixed. So yeah, that's 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 where we are. The, the responsibility is somewhere between the North Somerset Council and the environment agencies who also are involved in flooding. Obviously, there are also the environment agency involved in. Uh, flood defences. So, um, actually, we were due to meet the North Somerset flooding manager yesterday, but he uh, had to postpone due to a family issue. But um, yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Mary Mafsal. I'm South Ward councillor as well with Bob Cartwright. So, I've literally just sent an email about that issue this week to um, the. Um, office manager who's reported it to North Somerset Council with the photographs I sent her as well. So I've um, reported it. It's been reported to North Somerset Council. We've got a reference number for it. And um, she says, of course, as soon as I get a response, I'll let you know and hopefully it'll be rectified. But like Paul says, it's not going to be overnight, but it has been reported by the South Ward councillors to North Somerset Council and um, we're on their back for it. And we'll keep it on as well. Yeah. So yeah, so some some blockages can be dealt with, but there just are underlying issues which are just really expensive to to fix, unfortunately. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lady, lady online. Yeah, Catherine, yeah. can you hear us? You're on mute. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. 
Uh, just asking, please, can you comment on the decline of our high street? Is there any pressure being put on landlords to review rents to make trading viable for businesses and revitalise our village? Is that Roger, yeah? Hi, thanks. Um, I, most of you probably know that I've got a, a shop in the high street. I, 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 pay, I pay rent on that to Bristol City Council. Um, Bristol City Council own an awful lot of property in the high street. Um, many others are owned by different investment companies and a few are privately owned. Um, Bristol City Council and and the private landlords, they they do their rents based upon what they call open market rent. So every time your rent comes up for review, they review what the open market rent is in the area and they set your rent accordingly based upon that. Um, and what they never do, any of them ever, is reduce it. Because when they reduce it and it comes up for review, then everybody else's has to be reduced. So rather than take the hit on reducing it they'd rather have empty properties and i know it's absolutely stupid it's it's the wrong way of doing things um but it's the way it works in this country and some of some of the traders in the high street over the last what 30 odd years that i've been there have tried and tried and tried we've even tried to buy the properties off bristol city council um, and they won't sell them either so there, there is very little. North Somerset don't own it. Portishead Town Council don't own it. Um, Bristol City Council and a couple of, of large private landlords own it. And we are a little bit stuck on that one. So sorry, not much we can do about that. I would suggest there's some thinking outside the box that needs to be doing on that. And because clearly that them going empty can't be the way. No, I, I, think... I, I understand. We've, we've, been, we've been trying to think outside the box on this for the last 30 years and, and not got very far with a lot of people in the high street over the years trying, trying to do something. Um, so if anyone's got any suggestions as to how that could happen, um, that would be great. So... So the, the rent the rent free periods are offered to new tenants coming in. Um, they are specifically excluded from your lease. So you cannot use a rent free period to reduce your rent. And once you've got an ongoing lease, you can't have a rent free period. So the, the only way to get a rent free period is to agree to the full rent for a, a property as a new tenant going in. And that's and, and which, which is fine. You might get 12 months or so rent free. And then after that, for the rest of the time you're in that property, you'll be on the full rent. So basically, should not all of the Porter's Head businesses club together and present to Bristol City Council that we need a, a, a reform? This is, this is ridiculous, isn't it? We're, if we're just going to bow down and say, oh, we can't do anything about it, this is ridiculous. Yeah, and, and you're, you're there's no attraction for any new business to open, and we're just going to go into further and further decline. Yeah, and as I say, your, your business owners tried this, they have businesses to run. Um, and you know, I've, I've known many traders in the high street just give up, just give up, leave their shops, which is why we have a, a regular turnover of businesses in there. They that rather than fight Bristol City Council, they've got deep pockets. They're not afraid to use their solicitors. Um, so ra rather than, um, than go down that, that route, people just give up. One second. People can't hear you online. So could we just make sure the mic gets passed around? Roger. Yeah, so the question is, why don't we take the fight? No, as I said, the question is, why, why don't we take the fight to the public? And I think, honestly, after spending 30 years doing this, I'm too tired. I've had enough and most of the other traders feel exactly the same way. Um, they're all out to just try and get through at the moment. Trades are not good in the high street. 
Uh, I, it's not really a, an Ask Roger no, session, okay. so if we can get can on we, to something else, that would be good. Can we go to the gentleman at the back on the left, please? I'll, I'll bring it over to you. And then Laura. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, a few years ago, a TV celebrity, Mary Portis, did an initiative backed by the government for seeing the problem that we're facing today. Now, if you Google it, you will see her report is still there. And it talked about town councils, chamber of commerces, and a number of bodies working together to save the high street. Now, I attended one of those on my, in my own capacity as a then business owner, owner, and I brought it back to Portis Head. And at the time, we were told that the high street is not only full, but there are people queuing for shops, which I think was the, was the situation at that time. And so nothing was actioned on that initiative. But it is still look worth looking at those paperwork, seeing what it suggests, because it doesn't talk about individual shops doing the battle. It talks about the community and the balance of shops in the high street that should be invited in and the activities like having a jazz festival, or all kinds of things, you can encourage people to stop at the high street. And ironically, one of them, which was crucial, was the ease of parking in the high street. Now, I'm not going to bring that up now, but I'm just going to simply say it was one of the items. So if you're looking for somewhere to start from, rather than trying to leave it to individual shop owners, you may want to look back at that Mary Portis initiative as I say, if you Google it, you will find all kinds of useful information on there. And it was government backed at the time. Am I correct in thinking we don't, no longer have a Chambers of Commerce in Portishead either? I don't know. I'm retired. I'm long. No, I don't think we did. Yeah. So I think point, point one, I suppose, is also is we need to try and get a Chambers of Commerce back. I suppose this will be one suggestion, which is shopkeepers and the town council supporting that somehow. So I know we did initially in 2019 when we came in. We had several meetings in the hall when it, I, I thought it was quite beneficial to the shopkeepers, etc. But we need to help them. And obviously, there has been a change of government, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> maybe the new MP can help us out. I don't know. We, if we can't just sit here, roll back and stick our legs in the air and say nothing. I'm aware of a shopkeeper uh, that's just gone through a two-year battle with Bristol City Council. Uh, and it's like, utterly appalling how they treat people and how they just like, well, we're not bothered. You don't want to stay, then we'll fill you up. Well, you won't because we've got shops that are empty because the rents are too high and so on and so on. So I think we just need to have a... a I think Chris, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we need to have a kind of a, a proactive approach to it. So a combine between the shopkeepers, the town, and obviously the town council, because if we fight it together, you're fighting it as a body, they'll pick off individuals. They can't pick you off when you go together it's hard to pick you up so if we want to make real positive change i'd suggest that if the town council prepared to facilitate it the town council facilitate a meeting with residents and shopkeepers and try and get the mp along and then see what we can put together to, with an action plan to move forwards not easy admitted not quick but you've got to start somewhere we can't just lie back because you've got hsbc empty you've got boots empty uh Connells, Freemans have gone sadly last week. So it, the, the high street looks sad. Uh, you know, we've had the lights in tonight, which put something into this town, which a lot of towns don't get. They don't have the volunteers like we are lucky to have uh, and put the lights up. They farm it out to some company and they still look rubbish, uh, personal opinion. But, you know, ultimately we've, we've got to do something to draw people in and the lights draws people in. So can we combine... Maybe not this year because we can't mobilise quick enough. But the Christmas market, a combination of trying to drag people into the town at the Christmas market, we know that gets between eight and ten thousand people at the market every year. So it's a it's a catchment point. But other towns around are doing different things. You've got the farmers market happening in the Waitrose thing. Could we bring that into the centre of town a bit every now and again? You've got the just the Eat Festival. Uh, could we bring that into the central town again? Instead of putting it on the marina, can we get mm. some collaboration where they, actually these groups start to work with each other, start to talk to each other and bring it into the centre? If you've got a draw, and I'll, and I'll say this is what I think, 
if I look at the high street now, is there anything that's drawing me in personally? Think, wow, I want to go there. Unfortunately, nothing. That's not being rude. It's just my opinion. We've got to have a draw. Uh, you know, you, you get one shot move out, which is quite good, and another shot move in to a rather big unit. Doesn't help the high street. You need the smaller ones because they work better. Uh, one second, Nicola. Uh, Laura first, and Nicola. I've learned a buzz term called future proofing. And these comments have made me think about the Wyndham Way study area and the development of Old Mill Road. What can be written into any agreements should those developments go ahead to safeguard the future of business from going the same way? I don't want any commercial stuff developed by people who are going to own it from afar and tie the hands of businesses in Portishead like Bristol City Council appear to be doing. What can be done to ensure that control of these sorts of issues are, are, have, have more ownership locally? I don't think there's an easy answer to that question. I think the, the, one of the answers would be to get the government involved and actually the government to probably do something to help towns and local businesses. The, the government talks, many governments successively have talked a good game about helping the high street, as we all, we all, we all see the papers and news, but actually high streets up and down the country are on their knees, you know, and there's, there's something about to happen tomorrow budget-wise and everyone's literally quaking in the boot because taxes are going to go up. X, Y, and Z, and again, it's how's it helping businesses? It's not. There's, there's no. There's. Yes, you've got to inspire the economy, and you've got to inspire people, but you can't keep putting things up. You've actually got to go to the root cause of it all. You can't just keep going to, well, we haven't got any money. It's not an excuse. Uh, as and the question that I always ask myself, we owe, you know, the the, the Bank of England, and you know, and uh, the all the money, metropolises around the world. Uh, and all it is is a computer. It's a game. It's all the playing a game with people's money in it. But actually, it's, it's people's livelihoods that matter. And we want the high street to thrive and survive. That's why we live in Porter's Head. And we want them, free, lots of Freemans going. He's just sad. Uh, Nicola, last question on this one. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, during the arts festival, um, we were told by a couple of businesses that it was their best weekend of the whole year. And um, one of the businesses actually said this to me last year as well that last year's festival was the best um, weekend that they'd had. So I just want to say that it is possible to have things that involve the whole town on the high street, revolve around the high street, but include the whole town. It is possible. And I'm looking forward to the carnival coming back because I think that'll be another big draw. And But we actually have to have things for people to come all year round. It's, it's all well and good having these things and encouraging people to come from outside of town to visit Porter's Head and to see how wonderful it is. Um, but we need people to see something on these particular events that will make them keep coming back each week or each month or whatever. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that. It is possible. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Paul, last one on this one. Yeah, I mean, just picking up what you're saying there, Ben, I mean, there are other towns not that far away with it quite often on a monthly basis get 10,000 people coming on to their markets. So, you know, I'm sure the town council's quite happy to facilitate a discussion and maybe do something better than that town. So, and it, can, and it obviously brings in a huge amount of trade, not only to the market trade, but to the town as a whole. So why not? It's a fantastic place we live in. It's got the... the, the it's got the, the, uh, the sea, you know, and the uh, environment, so on a great high street so why not yeah i think also maybe talk to boat folk as well because they have regular stuff going on down there and it's always a hive of activity i was down there sunday afternoon and it was packed so again instead of looking into the, just to the high street we've got to look outside and bring stuff that sits outside bring it inside and start to work together as a group one second one second one second what about the people that live here, you know? Right. So, yeah. what about the people that live here? We actually can't go in the high street and do our shopping. We go to a supermarket, we come back. The, the butcher, yes, and there's a bakery. But 
there's nothing else. There's no, like, you wouldn't go down and find a greengrocer or a fish stall or, a, you know, it's just, we're missing these shops that people would come here for. I think we are. Perhaps it's just me, I'm um, old fashioned. <laughs> I think you need a variety. Ultimately, or any yeah, high street cross country needs a variety. Yeah, you definitely do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I have an issue talking about the high street. Um, the pavement on the high street is in a disgraceful. It's a situation where everything is broken. All the I I ride a mobility scooter and it's it's like riding a bucking bronco, and I I nearly said nearly said it wrong then. <laughs> Um, it is dangerous, um, and I've got a, a particularly big, strong one, and I, I find it difficult. The little ones, I don't know how people manage to, you know, to do it. it where the vans have been parking on the on the high street, uh, on the pavement in the high street, they've broken all the the, the lovely bricks that were put there. Um, who's responsible for this? Is this North Somerset Council? It's a two-pronged attack really odd so the slabbed areas which is about two meters wide the actual physical slabs is north somerset council land the rest of it behind the slabs and you've got the the, the concrete slab paving then the tarmac areas and the uneven rough tracks generally to the shops shops responsibility so bertie's for example uh down that side where bertie's and the boutique boots etc all that bit in front of it is down to the shops it's their lease mm. we we have the issue because we and i only know it because it's the christmas lights so we like to put obviously all the stalls on the fully on the pavement but we can't we have to put them on half on half off because if the shopkeeper wants to open we want them to open because it helps them out obviously and it benefits them massively mm. but we can't put it on their land unless they say so uh so it's a two-pronged attack so i think but I think going back to the, the whole holistic point around this, the shopkeepers don't have the money to kind of spend on fixing that. So it's again, it's how we find a solution no. to fix that because it is an absolute, the, particularly the, the boots bit is terrible. The, the thing is, I've noticed um, where you have the dip in the pavement by zebra crossings, um, that must be North Somerset, yeah? Those are the broken, those are broken as well, a lot of those, um, where I assume vehicles have, have crossed over, um, you know, and, and just broken them up. Um, but and to go down, it's bad enough going down when they're normal, but to go down when they're broken, um, it can be pretty dangerous. So, Heather, Heather, I was just going to say if, if you wouldn't mind just taking a photo of the where the broken ones are and just and yeah. just send them to me, I'll report those to North Somerset. Okay, but it's really it's always helpful if there's a um, you know, a little picture of your mobility scooter as well might prompt them to do something. So, but I'll follow that up for you. Okay. Um, yes, I just want to, while you're on the high street, I just wanted to raise something on behalf of somebody in the village. And it's and it's something that concerns me as well. And it, re it relates to the pavements. And I totally agree with you, um, Heather. Some of them are in a terrible state. But we have raised that several times at town council meetings and i was told obviously that some of them are owned by Bristol city council so is it up to residents to resolve those issues or will the town council take that forward to the district council and with regard to photographs i actually provided photographs um, a few years back but it didn't really have much effect but the main point I wanted to mention about the high street is the area outside dominoes now i wouldn't want to see dominoes die away it serves a purpose for a lot of people not me personally but a lot of um, people use it but the cars that park outside dominoes which is it's not really a driveway it's actually on the pavement now clearly that is owned by the Bristol city council that owns that building i'm not aware that anybody else owns it but at the moment those cars are going up on that pavement they're reversing out, not always in the, on the road, there's a bus stop there, but they're reversing onto the zebra crossing. And in the last few weeks, I have witnessed several near accidents with pedestrians and several near accidents with cars. 
Now, there may well have been accidents that I'm not aware of, but if there hasn't been, I fear there might be. And there was quite an argument in the village the other day where a car, a Domino's car, had reversed out on the best pedestrian crossing. And in fact, it wasn't someone going across the crossing, but it was a vehicle. And they just don't seem to be aware of the, the road is being used by other traffic as well. I'm not sure they've even got permission to do that reverse onto a zebra crossing. I'm not even sure whether that's illegal, but I think it's something that needs looking at to prevent any accidents in the future. And I don't know, I mean, I'm about to write to Bristol City Council, but really the, I've raised it so many times already. And I did raise that since 2019 with regard to Domino's once it opened as to who actually is responsible for those vehicles that reverse out and they just don't take due care and attention. Um, but I would be interested to know whether it's going to be left to us residents to do or whether the council will take it forward, um, not only with Bristol City Council, but with the district council, because, you know, clearly there are some areas that do are owned by them. But I think that particular area is Bristol City Council. Think, OK, unless someone can tell me otherwise. Thank I think, you. Yeah, I think two, two points that I know if incidents happen, we've had it before when the police have been in here, for example, or North Somerset they'll say, well, nobody reports these things. So first point is, any near miss like that, it's got to be reported to the police. It should be. They'll take a log of it and they should look at it. The cameras are right outside that part, looking straight down the road there because it's on the corner of what was Lloyds Bank. Uh, obviously, and then in terms of North Somerset pavement areas, again, keep putting it on the North Somerset portal. Uh, but do we have a volunteer district council? We've got a couple in the room that's going to kind of maybe be the kind of the buffer to kind of try and see if we can get North Somerset to the table and have a conversation around this one as well. Because again, again, it doesn't not just the high street. There's a there's a marina and all sorts. So it's just a whole ongoing thing. But again, reporting it is fine. But is there a district councillor can help us out on this one as well? I suppose. I that's what I'd like to see from this meeting, is really for um, the the town council to be a conduit between the residents and North Somerset Council over these issues that affect them um, and to come back to the residents with uh, answers if they, ca if they can or at least um, what process that it, it, they go through because it seems to me that the residents are on their own when it comes to North Somerset Council um, but it would be handy to know that the, 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 the town council could do our work for us if you like. Sorry, can I can I just make a point that reversing onto a main road is illegal, and so quite correct what you said. It's a matter of the police taking account for it and coming down and finding people or prosecuting people that that do just that. So people that pull out on yeah, but it, it needs reporting to the police so that they can come down and take action, and that will stop it quicker than any council will. Yeah, I think Chris, the lady behind you had a hand up as well. But is it on the same topic? Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say exactly the same thing. Driving over a pavement, never mind reversing out, which is illegal, but driving onto it if it's not dropped down for the exact purpose of... So if it's dropped because of a zebra crossing, that doesn't make any difference. It has to be dropped for access. And if it's not, then it's illegal. So the police have to. But I would hope that the town council might contact the police on the residents' behalf because they're going to get very annoyed if every single resident in Portishead who witnesses this every night keeps contacting them. So I think something ought to be done as a group um, contact and make sure that the police are aware of it. They do have traffic um, police that can come and sit and actually watch what's happening over a certain period of time, perhaps on a Friday or Saturday night. So that might be something the council could take forward for us. Well. On that one, we'll take it up with Alan. We'll pass it on to the councillor, Alan George, uh, if we can on that one. Obviously, he's the resident expert on that stuff. Uh, and we'll take it up. I, what I will say is I, I take your point, whereas all the residents maybe not want to report it, but the police will tell us, because I've sat there with the police and they've told us, unless these things are being reported to us, we won't do anything because we don't know it. There was an incident or several instances a few months ago, a few, whatever it was ago anyway, on the village quarter, and the police sat here and said, report it, report it, report We don't care whether we get one report or 100 reports, just keep reporting it, because they can only react on reports. 
And then I know it may flood their system and they may get absolutely going nuts about it. But actually, their comment was just just tell us, just keep telling us. That was what they asked us to do. That's uh, fair so enough. Yeah, so I think the town council will speak. We'll get Alan George on it. I know he's not here tonight, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll get him on it and then we'll take it from there. Uh, Whilst I've got the microphone, yeah. can I just uh, piggyback on that and ask if anything's going to be done in preparation for or whether or not it will happen? Um, now the parking charges are going to be coming in at some point around the lake grounds. Um, are, there going, are there plans to be putting up double yellow lines around all the residential areas adjacent to it? And what's uh, going to happen when that happens? And Yeah, a few of us have complained about that, ironically. <laughs> Okay, car parking, right. So, um, uh, I'm in a situation at the moment, obviously, North Somerset Executive made the decision uh, uh, last week to impose car parking charges at the Lake Grounds and Rose Road. And Porter said everyone, uh, town council and district councils are against it. Um, so we haven't given up fighting it as the first point. So there is a process um, in North Somerset to try and get the decision called in. I won't bore you with all the local government bureaucracy that that involves, but anyway, there is a committee that can review uh, the uh, decision. Our view is that A, the business case doesn't snuck up, they're not going to make the money they think, and B, there's a huge amount of knock-on um, negative impacts on residents, so in Rose Road, whether it be high street businesses, whether it be shoppers, uh, whether it be the residents themselves, um, obviously, in the lake grounds, uh, it's anybody using the lake grounds. So, there's a massive potential impact on the Lido, which is obviously a volunteer run organization, which is very successful. It's going to double the price of swimming. Um, it'll impact the tennis club, the bowls club, the cricket club, uh, the sailing boats, and pretty much everyone uh, who walks their dog or just goes for a, a walk down there. So, it's a really uh, I'll be polite. A really, a really misguided decision by North Somerset. So, there. Uh, so Tim Snowden is the district councillor is uh, looking to get it called in with two other councillors from uh, around, uh, one from Clevedon and one from Long Ashton. Um, so there's that. Um, also, uh, we will be. Uh, um, we have been talking to. Uh, Residents in Clevedon and Nailsey, who are equally uh, unhappy with the, uh, the proposals there, so we'll be joining forces with them to um, run a campaign against the charges. Um, so um, basically, if people would like to get involved with that, the more the merrier. We'll be communications and some ideas about what that campaign would look like, but obviously it needs to be a big campaign. Uh, and try and force them to uh, come to their senses. So um, that's what we're doing. Um, so hopefully there never will be any yellow lines uh, there, but we'll see. So that's the, that's the, I'm sorry. What was your exact question? Did I, did I answer it? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So the other floor in their plans, I mean, they've, they've done no survey for the lake grounds. They have no idea how much money they're going to make uh, there. I mean, they've come up with a number, but they've not told us what it is. Um, and uh, it's all very vague. They've done no surveys. But they, we, I don't think even they know exactly how they would impose it and where they would put the lines and barriers and whatever else. So, you know, it's not really been thought through as far as we can see, but we haven't seen that much information. So. Uh, I've got two hands up. I've got one behind the net, I believe. Is it behind the net? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mike, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Testing. Um, I just wanted to say about the parking charges whilst everybody's talking about it. It sounds as though not much has, work has been done on this, but who owns Kilkenny Fields is, is my first question because that's the obvious place where two... North Somerset Council... Okay. So that's the obvious place where 200 cars are going to go. So presumably North Somerset Council would be responsible for the upkeep of Kilkenny Fields um, in that situation. Um, and then the second thing is, and you already touched on the appeal on how you want to get people involved. Um, I suspect there are lots of people who want to get involved, but maybe don't know how to get involved. So can you share how you're going to 
take the next steps forward on social media and then what the steps will be if that fails because i understand that the final option would be involving purchasing the land by the town council that would be the the final option yeah paul just yeah go on it um, sorry the councillor said that it's likely to be called in as far as i know it has been called in because district councillor on social media told the public that Caritas Charles said that the matter had been called in by Tim Snaden with two people supporting him. So I'm not sure whether there's some confusion on that now. Um, it still hasn't been. It has been. That's what I thought. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I, I, that's why I was confused when the councillor said it, it, it's likely to be. It has been. Um, they did drag their heels on it quite a bit, though, to be fair, because the closing date was the 20th of October. So... Um, yeah, it's, it was a little bit of a worry. Um, I think it was um, the public on social media that probably um, encouraged that action. Um, but the worst thing that, that could happen to this town, if this town takes over those lake grounds, the maintenance and the um, costings involved, it would not reduce our council tax. And in fact, our preset under the town council would rise even further. I think it would be a terrible thing to happen to Porter's Head. And that goes for Roth Road Car Park as well. And just something to add, which kind of just to top on what Paul said, obviously there's a skate park, which quite a few people for quite a long time to get that thing down there. Uh, we, the town council and the skate park group, which I'm part of, there was an agreement with one of our biggest providers of funding to make sure it actually happened, that it will be free for all. Now, charging at the laygrounds is not free for all. Therefore, we could be in some very sticky ground if that grant provider reads what we're all reading and North Somerset go through with their threats of, of putting in parking charges because they'll say, well, yeah, they can walk. Well, no, you can't have a five and six-year-old kid walk into the laygrounds, point one. Uh, and point two, people do come from outside of Porter's Head again and provide, you know, buy stuff from the Lido Cafe or the Lakeside Cafe. So, again, it, it's completely short-sighted with a complete lack of thought. They've just gone this is my opinion, for the money grab without any evidence uh, whatsoever to support their kind of the path they're going down. Uh, and if the, the facts that are being put out there are true, then actually they're not going to make any money on it anyway because the implementation of it, one, to put it in, two, to continue maintaining it, well, the money's not there, so it's a false, false economy. So I do hope it's true that it's been called in. Uh, we're trying to fight it from our point of view because we put our name to the skate park and I don't want any kid or adult or anybody, quite frankly, not meant to go to the skate park because they can't afford the whatever it is, ridiculous parking charges. So I do hope that not just the town council, but all of our district council supporters in Porter's Head and all the residents, and we actually all get together uh, with with a plan. So I mean, I suppose the question, Paul, leading to the gentleman's question at the back is, what is the strategy and when is this going to be rolled out and how is it going to be rolled out? Can I just ask? But can somebody explain what being called in means exactly and what the process is, please? Uh, that's a difficult question, yeah. <laughs> okay. Basically, uh, a decision has been made, um, but they have these things called scrutiny panels. There's one that's got a very long name and it includes placemaking in it. So there's a subgroup of councillors. So you basically call in the decision to the the scrutiny committee and say we're not happy with the decision it needs to be looked out further but, and that's what it means so it's called into that committee okay so does that mean that council no that, that's that's the subcommittee whatever okay and then uh tim and co are pressing the subcommittee to say actually what we really want is for it to be called into the full council yeah. for a yeah. full vote which would be a named vote so that's what that was the end game in the process okay to answer the gentleman's question, um, we've been in touch with the uh, um, Save Our Seafront campaign in Cleveland, so they've obviously got a very good model for successfully uh, getting uh, North Somerset to see sense. Um, so if you look out on social media initially, there'll be something coming out fairly soon, hopefully, um, in, in conjunction with the, with those people and uh, Nails as well. So, all right. Fairly soon, what, one week, two weeks? I don't know. It's, it's a fast moving feast, but um, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, but it'll be yeah, it'll be within the next week. Can we just make yeah. our sure it goes on the town council website as well, obviously because of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, media, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, once we've got something out, we'll obviously publicise that. But yeah, yeah.
Do you want to pass it along, Paul? Um, it's really important that they understand. Um, I wrote to Nicholas Brain of North Somerset Council, who's the head of legal services, and he said that it will not, there is not a process that the matter will be called in for every district councillor to vote on. So I think we were slightly misled there. I can yeah, I can I only so I, I can know. read out what the district that what the head of legal services said. Um, I'm happy to read that out, um, but he said that's not a possibility. It goes to scrutiny the scrutiny panel once it's called in. They discuss it and encourage. If depending on what their advice is, it might go back to the executive to discuss it. There may be discussion within the council, but there is not the ability for every district councillor to have a vote on that subject. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll leave it there as it, I think ultimately it's one is a positive has been called in. Hopefully we can mobilise and get North Somerset to see sense and yeah, realise the error of their way on this one. Let's see. Uh, the gentleman there, they're going to pass to Paul Maltby, who's been very patiently waiting. Uh, has um, North Somerset Council forgotten the last time they really upset the people of Porter's Head regarding the traffic lights, there was a protest. And isn't it time that that happened again in regard to the parking at Lake Grand Zimbrose Road? I think it's an option, isn't it? We, we've ultimately, I mean, I, I remember the last protest that happened, which my I memory mean, was the Old Mill Road, which everyone turned up for. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't really go anywhere, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously they're back again, as we all know. Uh, but yeah, it's one of the questions. But I think want. the strength of feeling is so strong now. Yeah, and again, again if, if it's an option, then the town council obviously will no doubt will take that one on. And it's it's, it's not just Porter's head that's been just going to stop no, it. Obviously, there's Cleveland, this yeah. Nelsey, Cleveland, etc. So they're all in uproar, quite rightly so. Yeah. Uh, so I think let let's see what the plan that comes out is and if it if it means a march then we'll we'll have a march we've got the carnival coming up so we can march with them but yeah <laughs> bring it forward eight months uh thank you uh can you pass the mic to more paul maltby please thank Sorry you ben. To keep you waiting paul oh, no problem um ben it's, it's been touched on already tonight but um there's all there's many rumors that porter's head town council may take over the running of the lake grounds that would be a tremendous burden on the precepts of people of Porter's Head. Will the Town Council put that rumour to bed once and for all tonight? Do we have anyone who's prepared to say something on that one? Uh, well, all we can say, I mean, North Somerset got a huge budget hole. I think it's fifteen million pounds, maybe fifty-three million this year. So, as you probably saw in, in the public domain, they're talking to all the town councils about potentially taking over assets and services. So, but we don't no more detail than that at the moment. So, um, yeah, if, if there's anything going to change hands, there will clearly be a uh, we'll be pouring over all the liabilities, costs, whatever. So. We can rest assured that we'll be doing that, but there's nothing really much else to say because we're waiting for them to see where the, what their position is. So. so just to be clear then, Paul, you won't put that rumour to bed that Porter's Head Town Council may take over the running of the Lake Grounds and all the burdens that that would bring to the people of Porter's Head and their precepts. Uh, 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 the answer is uh, no, we can't put the rumour to bed, but yeah, we can't say much else because we don't know much else. So we'll see. Yeah. Okay. I don't. Just, just to be clear on this one, this is not a Paul Gardner decision. This is a town council decision. So if it was to happen that North Somerset to ask the town council what they want to take on the lake grounds or whatever, it would have to come back to a full council meeting, uh, and it would then more than likely have to happen in a, in a yeah. full meeting anyway to be discussed. So. I don't think it's slightly fair that Paul answers the question because he's not the one that can answer the question. It has to be a full council question, just to be clear on that one for everybody. Uh, also to say, if there's any sort of major changes like that, it wouldn't be just a council. You know, we'd obviously need to go to the residents and ask them whether they, they, they wanted a change of uh, you know, transfer of assets. And, you know, obviously there would be a choice. So it's, it's, it's much wider than the council. You know, it would be the residents of Porter said, what do you want to do? OK, all right. Do I see a hang up at the back somewhere? Yeah, Paul, can you... Sorry, 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 just... 
Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. For some, yeah, absolutely. Anything like that, it would have to be a, you know, a resident decision. Yeah. So, uh, no. Decision. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we we don't know the process, but clearly it will be a proper cons. There would have to be a proper consultation, not one where you get an answer that that you don't like and then decide to do something else, like a proper one. You know. So. But we, we, you know, we're very early days. Nothing, nothing may happen. Who knows? We'll see. We'll leave that one there and see what does or doesn't happen. Because I don't think anybody really knows. Uh, any other questions in the room? Uh, Paul Churchill. Hi, uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, Paul Churchill, a resident of uh, Northwestern, the forgotten end of Porter's Head. Um, we, we talked earlier on about whether Porter's Head Town Council would be the conduit into North Somerset to get things done. Um, hopefully, hopefully that's, that's positive. We can do that. Certainly in Northwestern, we've got some stuff that we've been battling with North Somerset for a while. Um, we've got We've got footpaths, as in pavements that you can't walk down because they're overhung with, with brambles. Um, certainly by the show field, it's cut up to the show field end. And then from there up to the cemetery, you can't walk on that side because of the brambles hanging over. And then once you get past the brambles, the pavement is full of weeds. Again, we, we even looked at putting a community group together to weed that area, we were advised by North Somerset it wouldn't be safe because of the busy road. Um, but then they're, they're not doing anything. We've got um, we've got a bus stop out at Black Rock Villas that is unusable because when the bus stops there, if you're getting off there, you have to step onto a grass bank. Um, there's there's no hard standing to step off the bus onto onto a grass bank. That then there's a two foot drop into the main road. Um, all these things have been taken to North Somerset and never had an answer, uh, along with traffic calming and things like that. So um, I would love for uh, a couple of, may maybe one, one would be good, two would be fantastic of the South Ward councillors to come down. I can show them the issues and hopefully you guys can uh, do something to help us. Do we have a willing volunteer, do we? Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, just on that issue, actually, something that we could do with Emma is that um, I think the North Somerset said that they had that transport budget that they've got and anything within 100 metres or something of a bus stop is now their responsibility that they will, but they've got a good pot of money, I think, that they can spend on that. So if we have photos and evidence and if we collate that again, and that um, goes with your thing as well, Heather, about the mobility scooter on the high street. Mm those photographs, because the high street has bus stops on it, and they're all going to fall within the 100 metres of the bus stop, or the pavements that are not usable by mobility scooters and things, and people who would be using the transport. So if we collect all of those photographs, if you send that to us, to the North Somerset Council, and Emma and I can take that to the transport for the, for the bus thing that we're doing, I think, when's that date as well, in November? Yeah, so we've got two BSIP meetings that we can take all those photographs to specific routes, specific places, going to bus stops, and we will give that to them, and then we will we will try and uh, pull their hand to kind of make them do something about those routes. Yeah. So can we also then add the ads we're on the bus stops? Can we also add Keys Avenue to that one, Heather? Please, because the key, two bus stops on Keys Avenue are absolutely just yeah shocking. You get attacked on one side by all the bushes. And you fall over on the other side by all the leaves. So they just, yeah. So if we, if we can, and while we're on the topic of that, can I have a volunteer for the East Ward to come and have a walk around with me around the ponds, please? Because I've raised it to North Somerset on numerous occasions when I was a councillor. And actually, me and a resident actually went in that manky pond on Gallingale Way and cleared it, cleared it all out. And it took to North Somerset 18 months to then take the stuff away that we pulled out. Uh, but you now can't walk down one side of it because it's overgrown. It's just and the pond's overgrown and it stinks. And it is a sud. It's a soak away pond to stop our houses flooding. But it's actually meant to 
collects the water, but it can't collect the water because there's so much overgrown rubbish in it. If you have someone volunteer for these, what please? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it, Ben. Yeah, I've, I've also waded around that pond, so yeah. <laughs> just just give us a shout. Yeah. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Thank you. Um, talking about pride in Porter's Head, can I ask who's responsible for the Porter's Head signs on the 100? The Clevedon Road Porter's Head sign was demolished probably four years ago and never been replaced. Coming into Porter's Head along the 100, you don't actually see the sign saying Porter's Head, Twinbush, Fyche and Dendungan until you're virtually there. I'm tempted to go down with a hedge trimmer and do it myself, but health and safety probably dictates that I can't. So who is responsible for keeping signage clear? North Somerset Council, real easy answer. Uh, all signage around the roads and that kind of stuff and entry to town is North Somerset's responsibility, uh, whether it's give way, welcome to Portishead, etc. So it's their responsibility is my understanding. If anyone wants to correct me, I may be wrong, but I don't think I am. Uh, but they're, they're meant to make sure they're kind of, you can see the signs, and they're clean. Uh, if you look on YouTube, there's actually a guy going around cleaning signs because they just can't see them. It's quite funny. Uh, yeah, although it's not at the same time because the country no, should be doing it. I, ironically, they, they've trimmed the, gar the grass underneath the sign on the 100 this week, but did nothing about the sign. Yeah. Do, I think, again, I think what's rapidly coming out of this, which I did kind of expect will probably come out of it, is it's the conduit between mm. the residents and the town council and then into North Somerset. I think the problem is we can we can ask the town council to get the questions and they'll ask the questions. I know they ask the questions. I'm not just saying it because I was a councillor. They do ask the questions. But the issue is, at times, is getting them out of North Somerset, uh, having had dialogue with them as well. And it's they just don't seem to want to give you an answer. Or if the answer that they give you is just feels like you're being battered away like a ping pong ball, quite frankly. Isn't, uh, isn't... I think if, if we can try and work out a way of getting the district councillors who work do work hard and they do try and get the answers. But I think if we can try and get the answers somehow and it's it's trying to... Do we have any suggestions from the district councillors? There's three of them in the room that I can see, I believe. That's what I was going to say. Do we have any suggestions from them of how we actually get some answers out of North Somerset Council? Because we are paying them... All the residents are paying taxpayers <laughs> money and we're getting nothing. Peter. Okay, I'll take that one. I've raised... I've raised the last one council one second. Oh, oh. I raised at the last North Somerset Council meeting what I thought was the most disgusting email I've ever seen from a leader of the council. It was very nearly telling us councillors to go through the normal routine as they expect the MPs to do as well, namely to go on the website, fill in the form and wait. I quoted one of my residents who actually lived in Lipgate Place. That resident contacted me because, having gone through all these issues, he was told by the council, best thing you can do is contact your local councillor. I sent an email off to I thought who was the relevant officer. Got an out of office reply from that officer and if in trouble, please contact so and so. So I contacted, got an out of office reply. At which point I went to the assistant director and guess what? I got an out of office reply. I then, luckily, <coughs> Secretary of the director, assistant director, picked up on this because she thought it might be a safety issue and passed it to the relevant people in the highways department. Two weeks ago, and this started off in August, remember, two weeks ago, I prodded that particular secretary, telling her, thanking her for raising this issue with me, but it had been as you, her attempts had been to get an answer had been as useless as mine. Within an hour, I actually had a text message from a relevant officer. And the stupidity is, if that officer had told me at the beginning what has actually happened, it would have sounded good. Because there are two complaints, two problems in Lipgate Place. One of which is drainage, which is appalling. And the other one is white lines, which nobody can see the roundabout when it's raining. And I think that's dangerous outside of school. The answer I actually got from the officers was that a contract has been let to examine the drains. It's, it's complicated. They need a jetter and a camera to find out where the problem is. Work is likely to start early November. And the contract had already been issued for the white lining, and that will be carried out within a nine-week cycle. So my 
question back to the leader is, why the hell can't he expect officers to answer questions from councillors? It would have solved an awful lot of problems. I'm sorry, North Somerset has gone downhill so dramatically in the last six years, I just don't believe it's the same place. I think a council, you've elected councillors to sort out problems for you, and we've got a leader of the council who's actively stopping councillors contacting officers to sort out those questions. I think it's disgusting. I've been involved in local government on and off since 1976, and I have never seen a situation so bad. And bluntly, you're banging your head against a brick wall, and it's appalling, and something has to change. So, um, all, all district councillors were asked to send any queries that we had, like Peter has, through customer services. I now do that, and I am getting answers, and I am getting things done. And one of the things I had done last week, yes, possibly, Near, near where I live, somebody's, um, because of course we've had a lot of rain and there have been, and this particular person lives on a typical for the top of the hill, a road that slopes sort of down one side or, you know, from, from a higher level to a lower level. <clears throat> and, this, and this person who contacted me was saying that the drains were overflowing and the rain was coming down, couldn't go into the drain because it was so blocked. It was going down his drive into his garage and it was also going through the front door. I then contacted North Somerset through customer services. I then had a reply via con um, customer services because they had contacted the relevant person. I was then given an answer saying that a, a debtor was due. Um, they had got one for only five weeks in the year. And they were about to have one of those weeks. And yes, they would arrange for it, it to be in that particular road and and clean all of those drains, because I had asked for all of those drains to be cleaned, to be cleared. That has been done, because today I've picked up an email from that resident and, and saying thank you. But what it did also um, find was that, that the drain outside of this particular person's house there was a blockage there that he thought was a collapsed pipe. And I'm taking that back to, tomorrow to customer services to say, look, you now need to sort this out. So, so, it, that, so that is the way that, that we have been told to do it. And from my experience, it's working. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. So, I think uh, Roger's not there. I think, I think there's... I think there's a conflicting batch of evidence isn't going on. I think because I, I hear it's good to hear positive, but I, there's also a lot of negative uh, because people do say who still ask me because they think I'm a councillor. Uh, I say, well, you need to speak to the council anyway, uh, and so you need to speak to the council because they're saying we're, we got told to report it, we get a notification back, and nothing happens. So there is an absolute ether and I know for a fact there is an ether because I've reported things and it just drops into an ocean somewhere uh I think they're tipping it out at sea but yeah Mike Roger first then Mike uh Roger. Right. so yeah Peter sorry it's all my fault uh and when when I was when I was a, yeah very true so when when I was elected to North Somerset Council within my portfolio is customer services um, so I spent, obviously, as you can imagine, a fair amount of time speaking to the customer services staff and management to, to really understand the way that the system works. And honestly, it doesn't. It, it really doesn't work. It, it, what happens is 
or what's been happening for years, I think, is people phone officers and say, I've got this problem. And the officer puts it onto a list somewhere and it, it might they might remember to do it and come back or they might not. But it was going to customer services. They were passing it on to an officer, but no one was keeping any track of it. So there was no tracking whatsoever of these issues that were coming in and people weren't getting answers. Now, over the years, as you probably know, the, the staffing has been cut in North Somerset. So the officers were under more and more pressure, not just to do their jobs, but to answer all these queries as well. So I asked customer services if they could, without spending any more money, in other words, without investing in new software to do this, if they could find some way of tracking these these queries that were coming in making sure they got to the right place and chasing them up if if they didn't get an answer to them because i understand the frustration i think we've all had it where you where you pop something off to north somerset uh, maybe you know an officer who deals with that so you bang something off to them you get an automated response back and then you never hear anything again so we yes and we've put the tracking system in for um for not just for members of the public but for everybody because that's the only way at the moment that we've got of keeping a record of what's going on and making sure that answers are coming around and you know what i i tried this they they said it's up and running i tried it the first couple didn't go very well at all um so i fed back um and it's been working a lot better like sue says we've actually got a process now that's being chased up it's not perfect I would just let's be honest, it would take it would take longer than um, than my lifetime to make it perfect, but at least we've got something that 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 is trackable now, and uh, and hopefully going forwards that that will pay dividends. Although in the short run, yes, there will be problems as well. I, I understand that. Okay, can we pass uh, Roger? Can you just pass it on to Mike? Yeah, pass the mic to Mike. I'll get it in. It's all right. I've got one anyway. Uh, we've got a question from Catherine online, and it is, it is a change of subject. Can't the council go and take pictures of problem areas instead of relying on residents doing their work for them? They they do do some of that. Uh, obviously, there are only 40, well, 13 of you at the moment, uh, but they do do it, but it, it's a... It has to be a combined attack. It can't be them and us. It can't. This this them and us isn't going to work. It just isn't going to work. We've got to be a combined combined approach into solving these problems. It's it's all right blaming the council or blaming the residents or blaming North Somerset. It it the system's fundamentally broken. This country hasn't got a clue how to communicate. Uh, it really hasn't. And particularly when it kind of comes to kind of government things, when town councils are involved and district councils are involved, none of them seem to be able to talk to each other. Uh, and actually, none of them actually want to give you an honest answer because actually that honest answer will actually affect when you're going to whether you're going to get re-elected in four years' time or not. Uh, it would be nice to actually have some honest answers sometimes. I'm not saying we haven't had any tonight. That's not what I'm suggesting in the slightest. What I am saying is people need to start to talk to each other. And as Peter's alluded to, if you get told by the executive of North Somerset, did you say, Peter, to report it? Well, sorry, it's a wrong answer. Paul, on the last one on this one. Yeah, just to, uh, just to well, uh, enhance what you said a little bit, I mean, there are 14 town councillors. We are all volunteers. Um, we will... Uh, um, yeah, we are Sorry. We are all volunteers, but obviously we're here to help. Um, but it, it's really appreciated if residents can also help by taking photos or uh, whatever. You know, with, with people who can't, we're obviously more than happy to help them, but it just helps us... Uh, do the job and to the gentleman who raised the initial question about the signage you know i personally have a limited amount of propensity to send emails to north somerset and if i don't get an answer i generally go and sort it out if it's a small thing so you know small things like that if you just want to get in touch with me we might find that it's clean you know because what's the point of sending six emails and waiting for three months if you can just go and do it yourself so um we're happy to do that also in the, as i mentioned at the beginning i think in the town council office we do have some resource to do those sort of small jobs and that just might be a a, a much easier and quicker way of doing it and, and takes a bit of pressure off north somerset we've obviously got bigger jobs to do you know we're not going to go and fix the drains but we you know we, we can sort out brambles and stuff like that. So, okay thank you paul i think uh chris oh. 
on his they put it on a zip wire. Yeah. Is it flashing red? Flash the light. Yeah. Flash the red. Flash the light. Flash the red. Is that better? No. That's now flashing. No. It's flashing red. Right, thank you. Um, in a, the North Somerset Times, about a week and a half ago, in the there was an article about things ongoing, and it said that Portishead Post Office had asked the post office what was going on with regard to Portishead Post Office. And the comment was, the post office confirmed that negotiations were well advanced with a major body about putting a post office into Portishead. And I wonder if anybody in the council could actually confirm what you know, if anything about it, or what you're prepared to say about it? Or was that just paper talk? I, uh, I understood it was going into the boots um, shop. That, that's, what I've, that's what I've heard. So you is know, that a rumor, or is that just... Is there any? Well, uh, aren't they all rumours on Facebook? <laughs> well, no. This, I mean, this was in the press, and it was portrayed. It was portrayed in the North Somerset Times as a statement from the post office. And I wondered if any of the councillors had taken them up on it, or is anyone aware of this? No. no? Uh, also, I um, I don't know how true this is, but um, when I did a talk recently with the elderly people at the youth center um, about something or other. Um, a lady there who knew somebody in NatWest told her that NatWest was closing. And if that is the case, then I understand we'd be entitled to uh, a, a banking hub with the post office. This is come from somebody who was supposed to be, who is, apparently works in NatWest. When that's happening, I don't know, but that's the rumor, again, a rumor. I mean, it's worth saying that a post office and a bank are reasons for people to visit the high street. And so the fact that we, we've got one bank that only deals, I understand, with relative own customers, it does, yeah. and we've got no post office is another reason why people are not coming to the high street. We'll try and find an answer and see if it's fact or fiction. Uh, hopefully it's fact, but yeah. <laughs> I, I've not seen it. I don't know. So I, yeah, we'll we'll try and find out and get get it put out on social media and the town council website if it is actually happening. Uh, the lady at the back calls my uh, courier this evening. Um. All right. Okay. Um. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you, Heather, for organising this um, meeting. Um, but I do worry about all of these issues that um, people have. I think I don't think that the turnout here is necessarily representative of the number of people that have issues with certain things. But I, I also don't necessarily feel that it's North Somerset Council's responsibility all the time to sort every problem out. Nor do I think it's the town councils who have only got a very limited remit anyway. Um, so I just wonder whether or not it's about time Portishead had some sort of residence council or residence group or something where as a, as a, a membership, a group, we can take these things upon ourselves to do as residents. There's been a few suggestions this evening about going out and doing various things. Um, I mean, I can't clean drains either, and I accept that there are going to be things that councils are responsible for. There's an awful lot of stuff that residents could do themselves if they really put their minds to it, if these issues really do bother them. But we've got nothing, and I just wonder whether it's about time we did have something. One second, Roger, and one second, Laura. I, th I think it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, and I think that goes to the point that we're trying to make, is we're trying to make this a, a kind of somehow... There's got to be a link put in there between the town council and the residents and then town and 
district. Uh, and it's how we form that. Now, is that a residence association for the town? Good idea, but are we going to get the people to volunteer? I don't know. Uh, I think we need to form. It's, it's, it's all right having these meetings. I think Heather, what Heather's done this evening is fantastic. It, this is the, but this is a, could, it's got to be the start. It can't just be a one-off and disappear again until next year's annual residence meeting because they're kind of not being blunt about it. Fairly pointless, I think. They don't achieve what they should be achieving. They should be a residence should be allowed to orchestrate the meetings lead the meetings and get the answers they need from their elected town and district councillors is the way to go and if you have it like we've had tonight where it has been respectful cordial you'll get the answers we need uh and i think if we can maybe form some kind of residence association as an, as an example that and links in with the town council and maybe links in with north somerset and you're right we it's all right beating the town councils over the head with a stick but they do have limited control they do do the best generally uh, you've got the district councillors. Again, they've got limited what they can do. It's 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 trying to be sensible with what we're asking them all the time. Uh, but also, it would be nice if, you know, councillors sometimes are the shields for the officers. Uh, and we know that. And I've got one smiling at the back who's a councillor who's, who's, who knows it only too well. I think that's the problem. You'll get told one thing from a councillor because they've been told it by the officer. Then the officer... Well, say, well, I didn't have that conversation. Uh, so, and it unfortunately happens. So we need to try and make out how we go forward. So the question will be is, would you like regular residence meetings? Are these beneficial? Or have you got what you envisage to get out of this evening? Would you like the idea of visiting and creating some kind of residence association where we can then link in and try and get the answers? Uh, and another one is, we, we always have meetings at the folk hall. Uh, and there's one gentleman that's unfortunately not here tonight who kind of calls it his, what's he call it, Paul? House, House of Commons. Yeah, House of Commons. Maybe we can, you know, we scatter around the town because some people won't come here because it's down the bottom in the town. Maybe we can't get here. So maybe do we take it to Redcliffe Bay and Avonway Hall? We asked to use that. I think it's enjoy Church now, isn't it, Own it, I think. Avonway. So use that and you've got Northwestern. Uh, as Paul Churchill said, you've got the hall down there. So maybe we take them out every... Every quarter, we go out, we have a residence meeting. But in between times, you, you've got a committee that's formed, hopefully. Uh, and then they kind of they, they become then the link into trying to get more more things resolved instead of keep plonking it on a website or moaning on social media or coming to a council meeting and having a comments, etc. We can maybe make these meetings more productive and more uh, helpful to people generally and move, and, move it forward and, in a positive and constructive manner. And yes, I think if... Um, if you have these sort of residence uh, associations, you've got somebody to, uh, an advocate that can actually turn up at council meetings uh, to put the suggestions forward or the issues forward at a, at a proper meeting. Um, that's, that's the go-between, really. Yeah, I think it's the way forward, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what you'll think in a minute. Emma? It's on. Oh, excellent. Um, it was just to say as well, um, long time coming, but um, we are starting our resident drop-ins um, as of November as well. So we will be publicising those. They're going to be on the last Friday of every month. Um, and it's just our way, really, I guess, of increasing that engagement that we've got with everybody. Um, so we're going to be using it as both a, a sort of a, a means of being able to disseminate information, um, but also just for, for people to, to drop in. Now, we, we had planned to, for them to be all there, um, but equally from what everybody's saying, it, it, we, you know, we could go around all of the halls um, and every month have one in a different place to allow people um, better access to us. So, um, so yeah, it was just a, a sort of a word to know, but um, we will be publicising that on the website and through all of the normal social media channels. But, um, but yeah, in, in effect, as planned, it's the last Friday um, of every month from January. It's just November's and December's a little bit different because of pre-bookings that we've got here and, um, and, and just avoiding that Christmas period. Um, but, yeah, just to, to let everybody know. Cool. Thank you. And is that going live on social media, website, et cetera, in the next few days, is it? just everyone's aware yeah probably in maybe not next week but maybe the week after so yeah so. the about 11th of november then, i think isn't it yeah yeah so okay thank you i think that's a positive step uh that's the, the council 
Yeah, sorry, Heather. It will, um, yeah, so it'll be, I, I, I'll, I'm kind of omnipresent at them, um, and then whatever other councillors will be available to, to kind of join me on those Friday afternoons. But um, yeah, Friday afternoons, and it's, we're, we're aiming from three o'clock, Mike, aren't we, I think, um, in terms of, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> we were trying to juggle with pre previously booked um, some events and things like that. But yeah, it should be from three, three till five, five thirty, um, something like that every um, last Friday of every month. Quickly on to Roger. And then we'll start to wrap it up, I think, next 10 or so minutes. Thank you. I just wanted to come back on the on the volunteering that you you mentioned over there and um, i know it can be a problem sometimes for for people to volunteer to do things in and around the town because they, as soon as you say oh i'd like to volunteer for something somebody else says oh there's an insurance problem you can't you can't do that you're going to get sued all that sort of thing um so i know as a town council we we look where we can to try and facilitate this so putting together a meeting where people can get together and talk about what they what they can do what they want to do for the town is great we've um, we've worked with our insurance company um, we do have insurance for public liability for for volunteers so we i think employers liability as well for volunteers so we do we do have that cover in place which means that we could put together a group of volunteers <laughs> without too much fuss without having to organize insurances and everything else so yeah great idea and i would be more than happy and i'm sure everyone on the council will be more than happy to talk about that can i just say recently i posted on social media um, a, a map of all the wards and also along with that map were e email addresses of the relevant councillors for those wards um, I don't know how helpful that will be, but if from the map you should be able to see which, because a lot of people don't know which ward they're in, you know, sometimes. So um, it is out there uh, on on uh, POSIT pages or one of them. Um, I can put it on again if that's helpful, um, but it means if you've got an issue within the ward, um, there are email addresses for your own ward councillor if you, if you want to go directly to them. Um, and, and leave the issue with them. If you want me to repost that, I can. Okay. I think if we get it posted on the Town Council website, I know it's there, but sometimes trying to find it is not so straightforward. Uh, I suppose, so that going back to kind of, oh, oh yes, Raina. I just, yeah, I just wanted to say to Emma, you, you doing these um, residential meetings in the afternoon, that will only apply to people who are not at work. So what are you doing for those who are at work who want to come to these meetings? As it stands, um, the availability of the halls were kind of restricting what we could do. But um, if we need to move that, you know, on to, to six, half past six or something like that, that would be absolutely fine. So we'll see the first couple go um, and then we'll we'll adjust accordingly um, and you know drop others in and um we we're also going to provide a online access at those meetings as well um so you could book a sort of a time slot um in, in essence but we'll we'll get all of that summarized and and out but yeah it's yeah yeah and and boom yeah yeah we'll we'll try and get it out through um everything obviously our signpost um sort of claire and everything in terms of the work that she's doing at the beacon and um the youth club and the library so yeah we will and we just the more that we do them the more that the message hopefully will will get out so yeah but yeah any suggestions on how we can you know sort of get it get it further um, and widely published then yeah just please shout yeah um before we finish up can i just remind oh, people yeah. that on the 14th of November, there will be a bus meeting here. Um, and I understand there will be representatives from North Somerset Council and the bus service, uh, 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 bus companies as well, um, for anybody who, uh, who wants to come. Uh, just, just... just one thing, just quickly going back to something. Uh, there was a question asked earlier regarding the driving in and out of Domino's across the footpath and onto the crossing. Alan George has been in to Domino's today. He's already on the case, so hopefully he'll get this feedback from this evening as well, and we'll kind of get a bit, bit more of an update. But I'd say it's got to be reported to police because it, if it's classed as that, then it's dangerous driving, and they'll need to do it. If we don't report it, they'll do so. Well, they'll deny it. So yeah. Thank you. 
uh, Emma, and then they Yeah, here. sorry, it was only just to say, um, as part of these um, residence drop-ins um, that we've got, obviously we'll, we'll have various different councillors and everybody here, um, but we will summarise all of the information that's passed um, and the information that is sort of seasonal that we'll be distributing at those meetings as well will be available and we, we'll, we'll have our sort of a, uh, our section on the website, um, on the Portishead Town Council website to be able to summarise that. We just sure that everything that we do do there is accessible to all. Cool. Thank you, Emma. Can you pass just this gentleman here uh, on the third row? Thank you. Um, on a lighter note, talking about halls, I can remember, well remember, when this place used to rock back in the 60s. Um, it occurs to me that we don't have any of that live music uh, bands. We had the best bands in Bristol used to come here. Is the Somerset Hall underutilised? There. Well, there's an answer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a two-point And if attack. it is, why? We can't hear you. So, Detective Laura saying off the accessibility, except there was an issue in terms of the roof, which has now been fixed. Yeah. Uh, so the limit's been lift, lifted, but yeah, accessibility is the biggest issue. Accept and also trying to get people in. I'd love to, I, I, yeah, it's, I've been trying to get in there. Um, for example, I ran an event for disabled people, including a 30-piece all-female swing band, and I had about 150 people all squeezed into that function room at Clarence House. I'd love to get into Somerset Hall, but there's one tiny lift, and if you're bringing in disabled people, or if you've got a lot of kit to get up that lift, there's a weight limit in that lift, and the lift keeps breaking down if you try and get too much gear in there. Um, and also there's not enough fire escapes, so the capacity of Somerset Hall itself is limited because of the fire routes. Uh, the roof has been fixed, but uh, and also I don't know if you've looked at the Wyndham Way study area, but Somerset Hall is within that red line. And I am quite cynical about its future. Um, I, I think it would be a great shame to lose it as a venue. I'd love someone to sort the lift out and make it accessible because I know I could fill it, but I think it's going to become flats. <laughs> we'll see on that one, I think. Yeah, I mean, we, this town needs a venue. Uh, it was discussed uh, about putting a, a purpose built venue in the town, uh, but it didn't really kind of go anywhere at the time, but it, it may be something to discuss. So I think ultimately, kind of. To wrap the meeting up, I think it's kind of we're getting on nearly half nine. Uh, is there an appetite for these regular residence meetings, resident led and orchestrated meetings? Is there a genuine appetite? Can I have just a show of a simple show of hands if it's people are going to attend it and think it's positive? Well, I think that's a, probably a yes then. Uh, so if we can, we'll take, I'll sit with Heather and work with Heather on this one. Happy to do that. And we'll take it back to the council and say, right. We would like the hall, and we'll, we, we'll move it around if we can as well. So I think I think it's positive to move it around. It's all right having it here, but I think actually you've got to get other people as well. Uh, so other parts of the town, it, it benefits them, uh, and we'll we'll work on it, and we'll we'll come back to, with a plan on that one in the next couple thank, of weeks. And I thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, it's brilliant. Thank you, and for being well behaved. <laughs> There was, an, there was a, a, a notice taken down to the library. They had one. And um, I think, Councillor Gardner, you arranged to put the posters in the, on the parish uh, boards as well. So it has, been, uh, it has been advertised outside of social media. And you took, it, you took one down the library. Yes, Chris, thank you. <laughs> oh, and the supermarket, yeah, down to Sainsbury's. It's an age-old problem, unfortunately, whether we put it on social media, on a website, on a notice board, on a, on a 
massive banner in the middle of High Street that clatters you on the head as you walk past it. People still ignore it for whatever reason sometimes. I think may, maybe one option is, is we, we found is some shops in the High Street will let you put it in their shop windows. So, you know, there's, there's ways around it. it it's a, a problem that nobody can seem to resolve because it's just, whether it be social media, website, treading the streets, it's just an age-old problem, unfortunately. It's like we, we organise events and it's like, what, didn't what, know about it. So, yeah. What sort of time? I mean, would you would it be better to have an earlier one than say half seven, or um, but not so early that it, you know people aren't have come home from work and vary vary the times. Hmm. I, I agree. The, the gentleman at the, the third row here. Uh, we'll we'll look at it and we'll try and think. So I was saying this, the gentleman at the front here was saying uh, the demographic of this room now is. I'm not going to say the age, but on the higher side. Uh, but which is, you know, it's not a negative, but with, no matter what you do at the moment, where are the youngsters? Doesn't matter what you do. I, I sit on the work on the Christmas lights and we're absolutely crying out trying to get youngsters involved. But yet, no matter what we do, we can't. Although we did have a very constructive conversation last week. Well, we're having a live band in a few weeks, yeah. <laughs> uh, we might be having another one. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, it's trying to get everybody involved. But I think that by... I wouldn't change the times too much, personally. 7, 7.30, because people getting home from work is probably about the right time. I'd change the days of the week we do them. Mm -hmm. And maybe ju not just take them to council owned premises. Maybe we can speak, say, to the Old Mill and we can have a meeting in there on their first floor restaurant area or their back of their ground floor bit. So... Well, yeah, but as I say, or, or the downstairs, or you've got the, the poacher conservatory. So there's, there's options. We, we, again, we need to think outside the box, but we'll look at it. The consensus is that this meeting, I think, has been positive, constructive. I hope you've all found it helpful. Uh, and we'll come back, watch this space in a few weeks. We'll come back with an option for trying to get another one up before Christmas if we can. So, yeah. So thank you to Heather. Thank you to yeah. Mike. Also, thank you to all for, all for coming along on the evening. Have a good evening, all. See you again.